Buffalo Ridge. Uh, my name is Shannon Barker. I teach the Home Builder Sunday School class here at Buffalo Ridge. And it's a privilege this morning to share God's Word with you uh, for our adult Sunday School Bible class. And this morning we will be in the book of Acts, uh, the book of Acts chapter 8. And excited about what the Lord has for us this morning. Uh, in way of introduction, uh, this is a series called Streams in the Desert, uh, Striving Together Publications. Uh, the theme really is uh, come out of uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verse 6. It says, For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. You know, the Lord, uh, multiple times in Scripture, we can see the Lord providing in such a wonderful way uh, and see where He gives us streams in what seems to be a desert part of our life. And this, in fact, is what we're going to look at again today and look at this picture of the provision when we are yielded to the Holy Spirit. And so God is still able uh, in this day to send us a stream in our desert times in our life, in a time of testing, in difficulty, and in trials. And so we see here again in, in the book of Acts, we're going to look at uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 26 through 40 as our key text. And our key theme will really be learning the principle of God's plan. Isn't it wonderful uh, that, to know that God has a plan for each of our lives? And how we ought to be thankful uh, that God has us in mind, has each one of our lives in mind as He's thinking about and, and, and guiding us through life. And let us uh, be wanting to be yielded to the Holy Spirit as we look into this and as we see what God would have for us. And we're in the book of Acts, chapter 8, and starting in verse 26. Let's read this passage together. We'll read this from start to finish. And then as we open up God's Word and, and look at these individual points, we'll emphasize certain parts of this, this uh, passage. Here we see that in, in background here uh, in chapter 8, we see a great revival in the uh, area of Samaria. And we see that Philip, the great evangelist here in this passage, uh, has been preaching uh, in the gospel in many villages in, to the Samaritans. And we pick up reading in verse number 26. It says, The angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under uh, Candace, uh, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for her to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man, should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would, would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, like a lamb dumb before the shears, his shear, so opened he not his mouth. And in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For all his life uh, is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, and Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, and the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, and that the, the eunuch saw him no more, and, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azoetaz, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. 
Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this passage. Lord, how we see that you had a plan. You had a plan for Philip. You had a plan for the eunuch. And Lord, we are so thankful that you have a plan for our life. Help us as we study your word this morning. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. In way of background, we want to see here that we serve a God of love and mercy. If we look at, at the uh, book of 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, it says, For the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord loves each and every soul uh, and desires each and every soul to come to repentance, to come to the knowledge and saving knowledge of Christ Jesus. In this passage, we see a servant of God that will leave a, spirit, a spiritual revival in Samaria and go into the desert. Why, we may ask, here he's in Samaria and here he has seen souls saved and, and the, the Spirit is present and he's preaching God's Word. Yet, because our God is just as concerned with one lost lamb as he is the multitudes in a city. Here we see the, the, the call on Philip's life to leave this place of, of revival and go to the desert uh, for this one man. We find a preacher traveling into the desert, finding a sinner that is in need of a Savior. The Ethiopian eunuch starts his spiritual journey in the desert and left understanding that God, in fact, is able uh, to provide a stream in the desert. So as we look at three points today in our lesson, we're going to first look at the call of God to Philip. We see that early in the passage. Then we're going to see the concern of God for people, and then the conversion of one person. Notice the, the geography here. We, again, we see that Philip left Samaria, which is north of Jerusalem. And we see that the scripture says he traveled, traveled south in, into Gaza, uh, which is the desert. Here we see the Jude Judean desert, uh, the, a desert place, a very dry place. We, we often do not consider the desert to be somewhere where we would have new life where we would have a life restored, a, a life brought into a, a new beginning. Yet, here is the backdrop. Here is this desert uh, that we see that new life is, is had. And we see that God's plan was perfect. And so we see that God will, use an, God will use ordinary men and women to go to great lengths to ensure that sinners have the gospel and hear the gospel. It's refreshing here to see the, what the obedience did of one servant. We see that Philip here obeyed the call of the Holy Spirit. And what was the result? The result was the Ethiopian eunuch was saved and brought to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The application for us here uh, would be that we must fully realize how that one life can hang in the balance with our disobedience. You know, I think, how many times have, have I missed giving a track out to somebody that, that the Lord was counting on me to be that person? Uh, how many times did I miss uh, talking to somebody, spending time, giving time to somebody when they needed it the most, uh, when they needed that, that touch, when they needed that encouragement of the Lord? How many times did I miss my opportunity? Uh, let us be sensitive to that and realize how important it is in our everyday life. Uh, we may not always see God working, you know, since we're right here on the scene, when we're right in the middle of the, of the work, yet when, one day when we stand back and look in amazement uh, as, we, as we see the things that, that have happened and look at the big picture, oh my, how we'll be, be so thankful that we follow God's will, that we follow God's plan. And so... As we look at this first point, the call of God to Philip, and we see that in verses 26 and 27. Notice that the, here it says, arise and go. Uh, and, 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 this, and in verse 27 it says, he arose and went. Uh, a, a very specific command and a very specific response. You know, God has a specific place where he wants me and he wants you to serve and to minister. Uh, where, it's where we enjoy the blessings of God will be when we're in God's will. Uh, God wanted Philip to change locations. You know, serving even when it doesn't make sense to us. Uh, here a few weeks ago we, we heard a message that, that the Lord wants us to follow and to serve even sometimes when it doesn't make sense. And here we would think that Philip is ministering in the, the area of Samaria, uh, Samaria 
and seeing people saved, why would the Lord want him to leave? Yet, it was God's plan. Yet, it was God's will. And God will direct us through the circumstances. will direct us through counsel. will direct us through preaching and through prayer. Uh, we have to see that God has a specific place for us. So it was a call to the desert. You know, God takes note of us in our desert experience. Uh, he had the answer for the eunuch. Uh, it was a call of Philip to go to the desert. Not only was it a call to the desert... But it was also, it was an immediate and enthusiastic response. Let's look here in verse 27. It says, He arose and went, and behold, the man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority. So we see here that, that he immediately obeyed. And we see that he, didn't ex uh, he did not exactly, uh, know exactly, you know, as far as what God asked. He did it. He did exactly what he asked. He did it immediately. He did it energetically. He did it enthusiastically. Uh, there was no excuses. Philip didn't try to bargain with the, with, with the Lord and the Holy Spirit and say, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm ministering here. I'm seeing people saved. I think I ought to just stay. Uh, no, there was no questioning. Uh, he immediately obeyed God's will. And may we all be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's guiding in our life. You know, many of us miss out. Uh, how many times have I missed out? On, on the blessings of being used of God because we miss our opportunity to be immediately obedient. Uh, let us be sensitive to this. Let us not question. Let us not second guess ourselves. But when we are called by God to do a work, let us do it. You know, the application is God may be wanting to use us to meet the needs of others in the desert, in different times and different difficulties in their life. Let us be like Philip and let us be like Philip in our response and be immediate, and be deliberate, and to be excited about what God is wanting us to do. And so we see here the call of God to Philip. It was a call to the desert, and it, it was an immediate and enthusiastic response. So we see, as we move to the second point, the concern of God for people. And we see that in verses 28 through 35. Uh, we've read those verses, but I want to point some things out as we, as we move along here. Uh, we see that, you know, he was reading uh, the, the book uh, here, reading Isaiah the prophet. And if you do some studying here, it is uh, thought that he was reading Isaiah 53. And so here we see that he was reading Isaiah 53 and trying to understand this, trying to understand what, uh, what God would want him to, to know from the scriptures. And we see that one soul matters to God. You know, the concern for God is one soul matters. God takes time to notice one sinner in a multitude of nations. Uh, we serve a loving and merciful God. Aren't you so thankful that if, if you're saved and if you know Christ as your Savior today, aren't you thankful that the Lord had you on, on His mind, that the Lord saw fit for you to have the gospel, uh, for you to know about Christ. Thank the Lord that, that I'm saved, that I know Christ is my Savior. But how many people don't know Christ as their Savior? How many people around this area, northeast Tennessee, uh, and wherever you may be watching this live, uh, is who around us, how many people don't know Christ? Uh, the Lord wants to use us, and the Lord cares about each individual soul. You know, God gives all men light of consciousness and light of creation. In other words, we can see, uh, see that there's a God through uh, the fact that He gives us an a, a understanding of right and wrong, and He gives an understanding of creation and, how, and, and, and the creation around us. However, these two lights only show our sin nature problem, but they don't give us a solution because the solution is only found in Jesus Christ. The eunuch was trying to respond to the light that he had been given, but he needed somebody to tell him about the Savior. He needed help. And we see that uh, when, when Philip asked him, it says, understandeth, in verse 30, it says, understandeth thou what thou readest? And, and in 30, verse 31 he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? Here, he desired Philip to stay and sit down with him and help him understand the Scriptures. And so we see here uh, that the eunuch needed to know the Savior. You know, the same is true around our world today. 
many are waiting on us to be responsible and to share the gospel message. You know, will, will I, will you be obedient like Philip? Philip obeyed God. Uh, he obeyed God because he realized the concern that God had for people, realized that one soul matters to God. Here we also see that one soul winner makes a difference. Uh, you know, if we, if we look further into this idea about wanting to know and the, the desire of the eunuch to know, God knew, that the natural, God knew that the natural man could not understand the Scriptures. If you'll turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 14, listen to this, it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolish unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Here he knew that there needed to be help from the Holy Spirit in order to discern the things of God and to understand Christ. And we see here that one soul winner makes a difference. Little did Philip know that God used him, would likely use him here in this very case, to get the gospel to the whole area of Africa. Uh, it is, it is seen to, to be that the, the area of Ethiopia leading into the area of Africa and the gospel getting to that area started right here with this eunuch. And this eunuch went back uh, to, to the country and shared what the Lord had done in his life. You know, God has a plan to use us to bring people into a saving knowledge of Christ. You know, think about this. Andrew brought Peter to Jesus. And, you know, we don't hear a lot about Andrew, but let, let me tell you, if there was no Andrew, there may not have been a Peter. P Andrew brought Peter to Christ and introduced him to Christ and introduced him to the Savior. So we have to realize that one soul winner makes a difference. A lot of times we share this message of Christ and sometimes we feel discouraged. Sometimes we feel like uh, we wish people would understand it more deeply and would, would realize their need. And yet we have to realize that, th that this is a working of the Holy Spirit in people's lives. Yet our message Yet your message, the message of Christ, uh, delivered by one person, makes a, uh, makes a great difference in people's lives. So we have to realize that even like Andrew, we may not hear a lot about Andrew. His message and his actions that when he brought Peter to Christ was very important. Think about how Christ used Peter. Uh, we've taught many lessons on that. But think about the day of Pentecost and how Peter was preaching. And, 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 and many, many were added into the church. And so we see here that one soul winner makes a difference. Then we finally see the conversion of one person. And we see that in the, in the following verses. Uh, it, we, we see that in verse 35 through 40. Uh, and it says here, uh, look back at the, verse 34 in way of, of introduction to this final point. It says, And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Wow. You know, wouldn't it be nice if every person that we might share Christ with would, sit, would, would have a statement just like this, led Philip right to the point where he's, he said, he's asking Philip, who, who is this man? Who is this man that I'm reading in the book of Isaiah? Uh, is this talking of himself or is he speaking of some other man? And here he's opening the door for Philip to preach unto him Jesus. And that's exactly what Philip did. Uh, the Bible that we read is not a fictitious book. These events took place in history. Uh, if, you know, if we witness this conversion, we may not have thought much about it. Uh, it may have been a, a, a very normal conversion, a very normal conversation that Philip may have had had he been back in Samaria. Uh, yet there was great rejoicing in heaven over one sinner coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. If we look at Luke uh, chapter 15 and verse 7, uh, here it says, I pray, I pray unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Here we see the joy that the Lord has over one lost soul coming to a saving knowledge of Christ. So we see here that the, uh, the, in this conversion of one person, we see that the gospel 
is the power of God and His salvation. We see that in verses 35 and 36. Picking at the, in verse 35 it says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at, at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? We see here that Philip did not preach about the conditions of Africa or on social reform or how bad the society was at that time. Uh, no, he preached Christ. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, you know, the gospel says the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. There is nothing more and nothing less than the gospel message for salvation of a sinner. Uh, let us never add to or take away from the true gospel message uh, that God has, has presented to us in His Word. So we see that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Uh, and then we see second is baptism is not part of the gospel. Again, this baptism is an obedience uh, to His command uh, here and is an outward expression of an inward change of your heart. And so we see here the eunuch uh, was in fact ready to identify publicly by baptism. But we see here that, that baptism does not save. We see here that Philip answered his question in verses 37. It says, Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And again, he, he's emphasizing that the gospel message, the salvation that he experienced, was in fact because of the burial, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ, uh, not, in, not in baptism. And so we see here that, the, that baptism was an outward expression of his inward change. And here we see that he, he says, yes, I believe uh, on, uh, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And so we see in the following verses that he was baptized. Uh, Philip wanted to be sure that the eunuch understood. Uh, here the application for, for us is to understand the importance of discipleship. Understand the importance that once someone gets saved, once we lead someone to Christ, we need to help them understand, help them understand the steps after that salvation through the gospel. Uh, true believers here wouldn't, will not be offended by, by those who are called uh, to Christian discipleship to help them understand life after salvation. Someone that truly has a change in their heart will, will not feel intimidated, will, will want to know, will want to learn about the things of God. And let us understand the importance uh, in the conversion of one person, the importance of Christian discipleship. And we see here that Philip did uh, see that importance. I want to read a passage uh, from the commentary from John Phillips uh, on the book of Acts talking about the, the eunuch and talking about his journey, the eunuch's journey. Uh, if you can uh, remember, he was from Ethiopia, uh, and he was a eunuch at that time, was someone of great stature and great importance. In fact, if we look back at verse 27, it says a eunuch of great authority. So here we see that th this eunuch was someone of great importance. And yet he felt empty. There was a void in his life. And he was trying to understand these scriptures in which Philip did help him do this. Let's, let's listen to this passage as I read it. Uh, and, and really helps us understand the, the, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch's journey. It says, The Ethiopian had found in Jesus what he had not found in Jerusalem. Uh, at last his answer was, uh, the search was over. All of his life he had been a preparation for this moment. His education enabled him to read. His scholarship enabled him to read the language of the Bible. His high position made it possible for him to travel to Jerusalem. His wealth made it possible for him to buy an Isaiah scroll. His interest in uh, Judaism drew him from afar to the city where Christ was crucified. His deep disappointment in Judaism, the great hunger of his heart, all prepared him. Nothing was wasted. Nothing was wasted. All that God allowed him to do and allows us, uh, allows to come into our lives is significant. Uh, from the cradle to the grave, the goodness of God is at work in our lives to lead us to repentance and to a closer walk with him. Isn't that a blessing to think that all the things in our life God is using for his good? God is good all the time. 
And every event in our life, as He's using that, as we're being yielded to the Holy Spirit, uh, He's using that for a purpose. And we see in the eunuch's life was no different. Uh, He was searching, and things were presented in his life that led him to the point where he had this interaction with Philip, this divine interaction with Philip. It was because Philip was obedient to the call of the Holy Spirit. It was because here that the the Ethiopian eunuch was desiring to know. Uh, The Holy Spirit had prepared him for the message, had prepared his heart to be converted. And so we see here that the conversion of one person in in the the last part of this chapter. So in conclusion, uh, as we draw a close here, in the desert, uh, God led Philip to the eunuch, to allow salvation and to allow a new life. The eunuch had a a new life, had a life that he had been searching for and the answers that he had been searching for. Uh, As he was reading the Old Testament book of of Isaiah and Isaiah 53, as he was reading those scriptures and the, the, the light that he had and trying to search for the answers, here we see that Philip helped him. We see that God's call to Philip, he answered that call. He was used to the Holy Spirit. Uh, we see that God's concerned for people. Uh, we see that, that, that he was concerned over one lost soul. And then we see the conversion of one soul. So as we spend some time applying this lesson, I want you to ask the Lord to, to help you to think about how the Lord would want you to apply it to your life. You know, first I think is, are we willing to be used... As a, as a human instrument in the work of, in the work of God. Um, here we see that uh, Philip was led by the Holy Spirit to, uh, to go, and he went, and he was obedient, and he was being used of the, of the Holy Spirit, being used of God as a human instrument to do the work of God. You know, maybe you, we've been out of church for a bit here and, and, and starting to get back in church and, uh, and more things are going on. Maybe the Lord's speaking to you over a ministry that you would want to be involved in. Uh, somewhere the Lord has a desire. Remember that God's plan? God has a plan for me. God has a plan for you in His service. and wants you to do something for the Lord. Uh, I challenge you, if you're not doing something here in this local church... When we get back and you get back and, and things are, are, are normal, uh, try to find a, a ministry. Find somewhere where you can, can minister, can serve the Lord. Uh, you will not be disappointed. Uh, Philip was used of God. How can you be used of God in this local church? As church begins to resume again, uh, do you have a call place to serve? Uh, will you pray now that God will reveal that to you and His desire for you to serve Him in this local church? Do we find our response to the Holy Spirit enthusiastic and immediate as Philip responded? Wow. Uh, does this, is this convicting? Uh, we have to think about uh, how quickly, how do we delay? Do we, do we truly seek the, the, the Holy Spirit and the leading of the Lord? And when we know that, do we, do we immediately follow? Uh, let us, let us be, be Christians that are enthusiastic about God's plan, enthusiastic about God's work. Uh, our, our, our disobedience can cause others to miss an opportunity to hear about our great Savior. Uh, how important it is. Do we, do we really truly appreciate the effects when we miss an opportunity to do what the Lord has called us to do? We have a great message. And other people are relying on us to tell them about this person. Who is this person that we speak of? You know, here we see that Philip preached unto him Jesus. Uh, people are counting on us to do the work that he's left us here to do. Are we willing to be obedient? Is the gospel... It is the gospel that is the power unto salvation, plus or minus nothing. Let us share this truth with others. And then finally, as we close, you know, Philip took time to disciple the eunuch. Who who would the Lord want you to invest your life in uh, as they grow in new life? Uh, Maybe you know a a young Christian. Uh, Maybe you know somebody that's struggling uh, in, in, in their spiritual walk. Whatever it might be, pray that the Lord lays somebody on your heart uh, that you can come along beside. You know, we see here in the scripture, uh, here it says, And join thyself to this chariot. He joined himself, Philip joined himself to the eunuch. 
and spent time there ministering and fellowshipping with the, the eunuch and, and eventually leading the eunuch to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Let us find somebody in our sphere of, of influence that we can help disciple, that we can help grow, that we can minister to in a time of difficulty, in a desert time in their life, where they either need Christ, they need the saving knowledge of Christ, or whether they need to be encouraged in the things of Christ, in the promises of God's Word. So I pray today as we close in prayer uh, that, you'll, that this message will speak to you. Again, uh, this message of obedience, obedience to the call of God because it was part of God's plan. What's God's plan for your life? Ask the Lord to help reveal that plan to you today, we pray. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this passage of Scripture. Lord, thank you for its power. Thank you for the power of God's Word. Lord, I'm convicted myself of the times that I have missed the opportunity. Lord, a divine appointment that you've made for me to give the gospel, for me to encourage somebody, and yet I miss the opportunity. Lord, I pray that you'll help me to not miss those opportunities. Lord, help me to be sensitive like Philip was and to follow immediately, to obey immediately. Lord, I pray that those who are listening this morning will again commit to you to obey immediately, to obey the call of the Spirit of God, to be obedient, to follow your plan. Lord, help us to realize that our disobedience can affect the lives of others. Help us, Lord, to have a good testimony. Help us, Lord, to follow you, uh, Lord, and help us uh, to, to help others grow in their new life in Christ. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. 